hello and welcome to October's monthly roundup. Um, for those of you not familiar with this format, um, hello and welcome. I've had a bunch of new subscribers lately, which is really exciting. And this video is the video where once a month I sit down and I talk about the changes to my board game collection. So I talk about new games I got, games I traded for, um, things I've been playing, things I'd like to get, you know, that kind of stuff. And I encourage everyone to kind of play along with me at home or in the comments below, because um, I love hearing about, you know, games people are excited about. But this month is a particularly special edition because I managed to go to Essenspiel. Yay! I'm still here! I'm still here! I got there and back. Um, I guess I should be proud. Um, you know, this channel came out of my kind of depression and anxiety as a, a means of doing something productive and doing something I really love. Um, and it was a really big deal for me to go to a big convention like that for, for four whole days. Um, last year I went for a year. Um, and it was huge and it was daunting and I could spend this entire video talking to you about kind of how it made me feel and stuff like that. But I assume most of you are here to hear about the games. And there are a large number of games. Um, on a whole, however, Spiel, Spiel was a mix of ups and downs, but mostly ups. So yes, it was really, really tough to go. I found it very hard to kind of navigate all of the people being far away from home, you know, all of those kind of worries. Um, but I still managed to suck it up enough to um, enjoy it. Like the minutes where I tried really hard um, were the best and I got to meet some really amazing people. I could also make a video about all the amazing people I met, um, which was really, really cool. And everybody was so lovely. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind of felt like I was in my element. I felt like felt like coming home because it gets to be a different person um, kind of at board game conventions and things than you do at home in your ordinary everyday life. There aren't people like that um, that you can surround yourself with. So I had a, I suppose in summary I had a really wonderful time despite it being hard and I expected to have a bit of a come down when I got home. It hasn't happened yet. I'm actually just buzzing. I'm still like right on anxiety high with hype and excitement and ideas for the channel and it just, it kind of validated me as a person a little bit. So if you want a little bit more detail about I watched it, what I actually did and who I met and what I saw, um, I have all series of photos up on my Facebook page. I have a board game inquisition group. Board games, all one word. Don't ask me why it wanted a first name and a surname. I know they're two separate words, but that's just how my Facebook page goes. So you can learn a little bit more there. So now I was trying to total up the number of board games I got today. Um, because I didn't actually know. <laughs> there were three boxes of games shipped back here from Essen and the final box arrived today. So that's why this monthly roundup is running a little behind schedule because I kind of I wanted to be able to talk to you about all of the games. So I think roughly I have about 35 and I'm not saying that to brag or anything like that. Um, actually, I don't care if you think that's a big or a small number. I never go on holidays. I never get to do anything nice. This is the one thing we saved for all year. So I feel absolutely zero shame about having this many games. Um, some of which are review copies, which is, you know, also amazing. And what I'm literally going to do is take them in batches of five <laughs> and, and talk to you about them. Um, now, it's going to be quick because there are so many, right? And you don't want to be here all day. But if you've got any further questions you want to ask about then you know let me know in the comments below and the other thing to point out is I've not played most of these so I can't can't tell you <laughs> what I think of them yet um these are all like potential enjoyment games okay so before I launch into the direct things from Essen there was actually three games I acquired this month that came before Essen which is really weird so we're going to show them off so the first game that arrived Possession Crooked Tower Games and um, this came off Kickstarter and I also got the expansion which is Oh, that's very dark on the screen, isn't it? Corridors and screens. Um, so um, you may know that I did a Kickstarter preview for Possession, must have been last year at this point, and it's a game I fell in love with because of the art. Like, mega cool. And it's a very, very cool theme where um, you are a demon trying to possess villagers. And it finally came off Kickstarter and they kindly sent me a copy. And I actually got to meet both of the game's designers while I was at Essen. Uh, that was really, really nice. Maybe I'll insert a picture or something so you can see. Um, and I'm looking forward to actually playing the finished product. Um, you know what the most amazing thing is? My name is on the back of the rule book. Hey! I made, I made it big. So that was really, really lovely to see that. I love seeing a game go from beginning to end. It's just super cool. Um, so the second game that arrived before Essen is... Clank! This is Radiant. Um, or as it says, 
Radiant Offline Battle Arena. I just wanted to check because I know it's short for Roba. Um, and this is a, a card game from a designer I know, Jack Murray, he's a, a local designer. And I'm going to be reviewing this or possibly doing, I think, a playthrough um, on the channel so you can see some more about it. It's got some really stunning art. You can kind of see from this side of the box. And it's a card game that kind of reminds you a little bit of maybe something like Elf 5 or where you're attacking each other's bases, that kind of thing. Um, so if you're into card games, keep your eyes peeled for that. I think I'll also be doing a giveaway on the channel for your very own copy of Radiant. So more information about that to follow. And then the third thing that came in the post, something I actually bought and I've wanted for some time, this is Otis. So anybody who watches the Dice Tower will know that Z Garcia regularly mentions this game. Um, I don't normally trust Z's recommendations, they don't normally align with mine, but I really like this, the idea of this game. It is about deep sea diving and you have only so much oxygen and you need to go as far down as possible to get as many items. It sounds a little like the Oint game, of Deep Sea Adventure, isn't it? Um, but this is the obviously the, the bigger version and it was on sale, it was super cheap. So hence why I bought a game before Essen, what, you know, what a waste of money. So those are the three things that arrived pre-Essen. Um, let's go straight into the post essence bits. Okay, so can you guess where the first place I headed to in Spiel was? Who was the first stand? Um, well, to be honest, the first place I went actually was the Fog Love stand because my friend Oliver from Tabletop Games blog was working there and he was the first person I wanted to say hello to. I'm not gonna lie, I was really tired after traveling on the Thursday and I almost decided not to go in at all, but I actually went in just to make sure I got to see Oliver because he wasn't gonna be around for the entire time. And it was totally worth it. Isn't it cool to meet somebody that you know online and they turn out to be really nice in real life too? That's definitely the case. But the first real booth I headed to, is <laughs> the Empress Forest stand, of course. Um, it's where I spent most of my life. So this is a walking in Provence. Um, and this seems to be like a spiritual successor to um, Walking in Burano, which was the release last year. So this one is about taking photos. And what you're supposed to do is kind of build a scene together and then, you know, take photographs um, with all the right items, you know, in as much of the photo as possible. Um, seems like a really, really cool idea um, and I can't wait to, to try it out. And of course it's number six in their little series. I, li I really like their games. So that's their one of their releases from Essen, we'll be seeing soon. Okay, next, also from Emperor S4, but it doesn't have the white border. And this is Geometric Art. Um, so this is what they call a rolling and drawing game. So I'm not really into rolling rights. I do have one, uh, you know, welcome to made it into the collection. Um, the idea of a rolling and drawing game is kind of interesting. So what basically what happens is uh, you have to draw a picture, but you can only use the shapes that you roll on the dice. And they're all like, you know, squares and triangles and things. And it's really, really hard. Um, but it's also really fun. I think this is like a, a great party game um, and something you should play with like a gang of people. So yeah, th so this is Geometric Art. More to come from that soon. Ooh, trying not to have everything fall down. Okay, next up, we'll grab. So this is Phantom Crown Detective. It's a tiny little box. Um, and this is from Percy Chan. And a friend of mine, Tate Wu, gave me this. He said it was by one of his students and it is a um, social deduction game. Um, and I don't normally do games that need multiple players, but my birthday's coming up, so I'll have people around and I'll get some folks to play with me and we'll try it out. I don't have any social deduction games, but I will say one thing, the cards inside look amazing. Um, it's got some really adorable art. Um, and so it'll be fun to try something like party it for a change. All right, next up. This is a game I know you were lost about, but it's a reprint. So from Wolfgang Kramer, the man himself, Hacienda. This was actually on my SM wish list. I actually managed to get some things that were on it. Um, and so this is a reprint and you can kind of see the back. It's like an area control game. Um, it looks very like um, Java or to, you know, to Cal a little bit with all the hexes. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. I love a good dry euro. And then, I'm running out of spaces to put everything. Oh, the lid isn't even on this right. <laughs> okay, so next up, Vast the Mysterious Manor. It's a very big box, weighs a lot. Um, so this is from later games, um, who you may know make games such as Root. Um, and this is, seems to be a game about kind of, 
well, it feels a little bit like rude, it's definitely asymmetrical, um, but you're set in a manner, um, and you all have your own goals to help you win, or the ways to win. Um, indeed, somebody can play as the manor, which I think is really, really cool. Um, I've only unboxed it so far, um, I like the components, and the player boards are, are super cool, so I'm designed to see how it, how it goes down, and how it compares to, you know, some of their previous games. So that is Vast, the Mysterious Manor. Oh, it's heavy. Okay, so next. I'm just gonna keep, I'll just keep grabbing off my table. Um, so I have the Epic Long Box. Um, so Epic is for a card game from White Wizard Games. Um, I'm actually a really big fan of it. And I had a lovely meeting with White Wizard Games. I got to meet Debbie and she was fantastic. And did you know they had their own secret lounge for meetings? It was amazing. It was just like this hidden room away from everything with some like couches and like a fridge full of cold water. It was like, it was like an oasis in the middle of a desert. It was the nicest meeting I ever had. And Debbie was really nice. And I talked about how I really enjoy Epic. So it reminds me a lot of Magic the Gathering if you've played those type of card games before without the collectible element except everything you play is amazing um, and you don't have any kind of mana or anything to pay for your creatures or your spells you can just you know there's a limit on how many you can do a turn um, and it's really really fun so you'll probably see more of that from me in the future I've already opened this shimmy the long box because it has sleeves inside of it Woo! So I'll be able to keep my collection in this lovely long box. Okay, so now we have one more um, item from White Wizard Games. Bear with me. So I have Sorcerer. Woo! So clearly I am on a card game kick. So this is another card game from White Wizard Games. And in it, um, you're basically a sorcerer dueling another sorcerer. So you have a set of decks, you play against each other, there are particular areas. Um, I don't know more about it than that other than I opened it up. I do know that this box has a finger hole. I'm very impressed by it because it's very big and everything in here looks super expensive. So um, I'm dying to see how the game itself plays. I love a good card game, so there'll be quite a few of those. All right, now, so next pile. Okay, so this is one of the few games I actually got to demo at Essen. And this is Fortune City. And this was at the Taiwanese um, board game designers booth. They had a whole host of um, these really cool looking games um, made by kind of different groups of people. I'm trying to see who made this game because I'd like to, you know, credit them. But it's a, it's a whole other language. Um, maybe I'll look it up on Reddit from they're from Big Fun Games, if that helps. Um, this is like the cutest um, version of Suburbia ever, um, where it's more concerned about money and so you build your little tiles in your little city and you have a little van that you move around the city that can pick up the coins from the tiles you place down. So you kind of build a route as you build a city. Um, you also get your own credit card, which I think is super cute. Um, and it's just really, it was really adorable and fun. Um, I look forward to, to playing more of it. Um, and this is one I will be reviewing um, eventually hopefully soon rather than later this is the big problem coming back from spiel I have so much stuff I need to get to and so many things I want to show you right away but I'm only a human being <laughs> and of course then there's the issue of games I bought that aren't for review copies but that are kind of people want to know about you know they're the new thing um, and then you kind of want to cover those so people will find their way to you it's a really tough debate to be honest because I'm only a person at the end of the day Anyway, next pickup, and this, so you, you may remember me from such events as Feld Timber, where all I bought was Stefan Feld games. Um, the end really hasn't come to that as it seems, so I got myself a copy of A Year of the Dragon. Um, firstly, it's a numbered game, I love the Aaliyah boxes, and secondly, it was a tenor, so you can't really say no to that, can you, for Stefan Feld. Um, and as far as I know, this is one of his better games. Um, so I'm be very curious to try it out. And according to the back of the box, you're a ruler in China. <laughs> no, I knew that already. I don't know much more about it than that, but um, I'm looking forward to trying it out. And I'm delighted that um, I got it so cheap. Just cheap. Okay. So in other news in the Aaliyah big box series. Oh, this box has had a bad day. So I managed, we managed to get a copy of, here at Graal, is Las Vegas. So um, Las Vegas is another in these, you know, Aaliyah series um, that people really, really love. Um, and it's one that comes up often, actually, that people play. Now, I managed to get this copy, and you can see it looks a bit battered, because it is a bit battered. But for eight euros, because it's Banjax on the back. 
Well, we don't care because we got to play Las Vegas and this is the only game actually we played um, while we're on holidays. We played this in the hotel room because it doesn't take up any space whatsoever. And for a game where you just roll dice and place them out, it was actually surprisingly fun. Um, I thought I was over those types of games. Apparently I'm not. So Las Vegas. Oh God, it makes a horrible sound, doesn't it? Ah! Okay, so onto the new hotness section. Well, what I'm calling the new hotness, I suppose things that just came out, ugh. So this is La Stanza, and this is from Quinn Games. Um, you may know from games such as Friends, they publish those. God, this thing is heavy. This is the first time I've actually held it in my hands. Um, Cause I got so tired at Essen, and on the first day I gave myself a ton of blisters and could barely walk. So I hobbled through most of Essen and then would sit, and my husband, who God love him, put up with an awful lot, uh, would run around and fetch the games. You know, he it would go to the stalls and stuff like that to save me walking. Isn't that just wonderful? So he picked up La Stanza. I sent him to get Terra Mara, which was also at the same stand, because that was on my wish list. But he thought this one looked better. So I'll, gi I'll give him, um, you know, I hope he's right. <laughs> we'll find out. But yet again, another Euro game. This one is about um, artists in kind of the Renaissance um, and supporting them and things like that. You can kind of see the back of it. Apparently it looks, um, it looked really, really good all set up on the table and things like that. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not disappointed. I think it should be good either way. Um, right, so that's Euro game out. Okay, so next is something that actually wasn't on my Essen wish list, but should have been, and that's because this came out last year at Essen. Um, and this is A Pleasant Journey to Nico. This is a game I've had my eye on for absolutely ages, and they did a new Kickstarter recently for um, a board game cafe game, and you were able to buy this um, as part of a bundle for the Kickstarter, and I almost did, I got really, really close, um, and then I heard it was actually at Essen, so I got to go pick it up. So now this game, um, hold on, wait for it for the theme, is an ecologically sensitive game, and I think it's that you're traveling along the Antarctic to see penguins, and you're trying to do as little damage to the environment as possible. Yeah, I know. It sounds good, right? Um, so <laughs> what I've heard about it is that there's a lot going on, that it's quite an, a, a busy game. Um, I'm totally okay with that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I've, I've been there before I could do that. And I just, I love the theme. I think it sounds so interesting. It's got penguins on the side of the box. Like, you you can't go wrong. So um, I'm, I can't wait to get this to the table. Also, the components look really good. Um, so that should be super exciting. Okay, next. I have to get more boxes. <laughs> Okay, so next pile of games. Um, and the first one is one that people complain about a lot, but I really, really wanted to try it out. So, hold on to your hats, people. Got me a copy of Kingdom Builder. And not just Kingdom Builder, Kingdom Builder with this attached. Crossroads, apparently some sort of expansion. So this also was relatively cheap, which is why it's there. But it's something I've been meaning to try for ages, and it's one I find that people complain about or people love. Um, I want to know where I weigh in on that scale. <laughs> um, I like the idea of you know building kingdoms, and I've seen pictures of it. And it looks it looks pretty cool. Um, have you guys played it before? Can you give me any advice? What did you make of it? Um, so I'm really looking forward to trying the, trying this one out. Also, the designer's name looks horribly familiar. Should I know who made this? <laughs> I kind of want to say it looks like the guy who made Dominion, but that's just because he's got an X in his name. That's terrible. But yeah, so I'm very curious to see how kingdoms go. All good. You all love Queen Games. They had like 10 million games there for sale. <laughs> um, okay, so this is maybe a little bit more up everyone else's street. Um, so as you may or may not know, I've reviewed Orleans. I've reviewed Trade and Intrigue for Orleans. Now I got myself a copy of Orleans Invasion. Uh, no, this is not a review copy. <laughs> That would be amazing, but no, um, I, we love Orleans a lot in this house. It's a very, very cool bag building game. Um, I definitely recommend you try it out. And this expansion allows you to play it cooperatively. Seems a little weird. It seems like you, you're going to be um, defending the city from attacks. And I think that could be really, really fun. I'm very curious to see where it goes next. And also, if I remember correctly, this comes from Marcus and Inca Brandt. Yeah, Inca and Marcus Brand are on this. Um, and they're also some of my favorite designers too. So, th th you know, it's got all the good stuff going for it. Um, this might be the only expansion I got. Like purposefully just went and bought an expansion. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think that's it. Okay, let's go. So next, I'm running out of places with the boxes like around me. Uh, oh yeah, this is another game that I have seen and played before. Promenade um, from Tate Wu. 
So as you guys might know, I reviewed this, I did a, a preview um, for this last year. This was a really, really, really clever economic game. Um, and it's a game about buying art and about the price of art going up and down as it becomes more or less popular. Um, and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, now, I don't think it funded on Kickstarter, but there was a, it was refunded again. And so it actually got made, hence why it's here. And I was, I was lucky enough to get myself a copy. Um, this is actually a really, really good game. Um, and so I look forward to playing it. Um, hopefully I will just like play it live on camera. And I keep talking about playing things live. That's because one of my big purchases from Essen was a game mat. Um, I got a mat from the Game Topper people. Um, I can't afford a game topper. Where am my league? I can't afford a gaming table, but I thought maybe I could afford a gaming mat. Um, because I did a lot of kind of rules editing actually before Essen and I saved up my money and I really wanted something nice for taking photographs on the, the table. Um, and it's here and it's amazing. And oh Lord, it gave me so much dress getting it back in my um, suitcase. Because the man at the stand told me you really shouldn't fold this and put it in a suitcase. It might have a permanent bend. And I thought about it and I was just like, well, if I just leave it sticking out of my suitcase up until the minute before we get on our flight and then the minute we get off the other end, we, we pop it out, you know, so it's not stuck long term folded. Maybe it'll be OK. I was kind of worried about taking the risk, um, but it worked. Um, <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. It came off the, the travelator kind of at the airport at the other end. And the first thing we did was have the suitcase open on the ground and taking the man out. And I carried it through the airport and onto a bus and everything till you know, we got it to safety. But the mat is beautiful. I'm really impressed with it. And it does mean that I'll be able to do, make more videos where, you know, we just, we play games for fun. And I think some people seem to enjoy watching those. I'm not sure if you do, but I see no harm in turning on a camera when I'm playing a game in the evening. And if you want to watch, that's great. And if you don't, that's okay too. Um, I don't fully understand watching people play games myself, but sometimes I think it's a good way to get a look at a game. So new ways to show you things, it's always a positive. So hopefully I will do that with promenades. So you can have a look and have a peek and see what you think. Cool, okay, next. <laughs> Stefan Feld, the next. La is la. This was a tenor, <laughs> hence, hence why it's here. Um, I've heard good things about it. I think the colors are hideous. You see the back of the box, look at that. It looks rather hideous, but yet again, I've heard it's good. I think I'm just accidentally buying a lot of Stefan Fells. Were there always this many of his games around? And I just never noticed before. I don't know. I, I love a bargain for a tenner. I'm not going to say no to that. And my Aaliyah big box collection continues. Okay. So this purchase um, came from the Stronghold Games booth. Um, and I was there visiting um, a friend of mine um, and it was amazing to go and meet um, Roger who's somebody who watches my videos and I popped over to say hello and it was, it was you know what it was really nice meeting people from the internet and them not being weird he was super nice really friendly gave me a stool to sit on and while we were there of course we had to buy something at the booth so this was my husband's purchase so this is Aeon's End War Eternal um, and I also have Aeon's End, The Outer Dark, whatever that may be. I know very little about this other than it's a card game and my husband had it on our wish list for a really long time. Um, so I'm dying to hear more. I heard it's kind of a cooperative thing, kind of related to Sentinels of the Multiverse, but not really. So I'm not going to say a lot about it till I've played it because I might just be lying. Um, but like I said, I love a good card game. Um, I've heard lots about this and they seem to be making tons of expansions and stuff. So. Obviously people are buying it, it can't be too bad. So yeah, I got a, a whole a whole box of the stuff. So uh, good, and this will have to go back on the table. And while we were there, you got a free game in our, in our bag um, from Indie Boards and Cards, which is Grifter's Nexus. I don't know what this is. It was free, it, it worries me when things are free. Um, what to say about it? Players are powerful underworld, underworld crime bosses using their wits to outfox the competition to become the wealthiest. Okay, it seems to have cards. It's for two to four players. It takes 30 minutes. Who knows? Um, that would be cool if it turned out to be good. <laughs> but hey, I'm not going to turn my nose up at a free game, right? Are you? No, definitely not. Okay, on to the next bunch. Bunch? Batch? Bunch? Batch? Bunch. Okay, so next on the list. This is one my husband has on his list. On his wish, well, need list. I had it just a step below, so between us it made sense. And this is Foothills from Tony Boydell. 
um, and Ben Bateson and Lookout Games. Um, what I'd like to point out is Lookout Games gave out a whole bunch of stuff when you bought their games. So this is one of the smaller releases they had. And my husband came back with like a bag, a hat, um, a whole bunch of things actually and a free like expansion that was somewhere. So yeah, well good job Lookout Games. So this is like a Snowdonia but in cards. Um, and I'm really looking forward to trying it out. It's a two player only game. It's been a long time since I've bought one of those as much and all as I love Acro Terry. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I, lo I love the stuff written on the back of the box, right? Action selection with a twist. Great tension throughout. High replay value. Good Lord, I hope your game is highly replayable. <laughs> but um, yeah, exciting stuff. Do you want to see? I want to see more of this one. And that, that was his. And this is another one that, that was on my husband's list as well. I think he actually got more things from his needless than I did. Um, my first choice from Essen would have been for Bubble Tea um, from Renegade Games. The cute game with the little shaker where you make tea. But it never showed up. I know, right? Isn't that really sad? Uh, for some reason the game was stuck in customs or something like that, so I, I couldn't buy it. Oh, But his next pick was Coloma from Final Frontier Games. Um, and this is a game about, um, basically it's set in kind of the gold prospecting, you know, gold rush era. Um, and you are in part, like you're basically trying to profit off of this. You build buildings and things. Um, this was the only game that, I, well, actually no, two games came back in our backpack. So that while we're waiting for, you know, the postage of all the games, we could play something. This is one that came with us. So I've actually played it. It's probably the only one I've played. Um, not gonna lie, I was a little disappointed. <laughs> um, it basically centers on, there's like a, a roundel in the middle for choosing your actions from. And you have your own little disc and you say what number action you're going to do secretly and then you put it in as, as everyone else and you'll get to do the action. Um, the interesting thing is if too many people are want to do the same action, you lose half of the action. Yeah, I know. Um, I just found it a little... I don't know, a little derivative. I did the, I did the same action for the entire game. Um, and when I couldn't do it, I did one other action because the wheel moves around and says you can't do particular ones. And I won. And it was disgusting because my husband A always beats me and he deserved to beat me. I did not deserve to win. I did I did one thing. Um, so I'm a little disappointed. It doesn't mean I won't try it again. Um, you know, maybe, you know, you can't judge everything on its first play. But so far, I'm not really enthused, to be honest. Um, but it's a beautiful production. Um, and it's gorgeous. Like, everything in it is fantastic. It's top notch. Felt like I got a lot of value for money out of it. But just not, not mega enthused. All right, let's plonk this super safe. Okay, next. Another game that was also a tenner. There were some of these amazing shops we get games for a tenner. Junkart. Um, we are a family of people who like dexterity games but never play them. I think Junkart is going to go into that pile. Um, but I look forward to trying it. You know, you, you stack things like you're supposed to and it's hard. You use your fingers. You know, dexterity games. Um, but definitely a fun one. And I think geez, for a tenor, I'd definitely give it a try, wouldn't you? So this is the plastic version, by the way, not the fancy wooden one. But that, wasn't, that was not a nice enough surprise. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. This is the very first game I bought. And this is the one of the only ones I think I bought on an impulse purchase. Um, because I saw it set up and I kind of fell in love with it. And this is Winner's Circle from Reiner Knizia. And what you can't tell from this box is it's been published by Dice Tree Games. And they deluxify old games. So they only had three games there for sale. This, this was one of them. They also had, I think, Modern Art. And they make these really fancy versions. So what's in my box? Well, I'll let, let you know. It is some painted horse miniatures, some very fancy metal coins, and a really beautiful board. And for 40 quid, I thought that was an awesome deal. I think you can kind of see it in the back of it. Whoop! It was amazing. It really impressed me when I set up and I saw it and I know my husband likes bidding games um, and I like horses. So yeah, um, really, i really impressed with that. I don't think I've ever bought a really deluxe version of anything before. This might be the first time. Um, and also I've never played Winner's Circle, so it, <laughs> let's hope it's good. Okay, next in the pile is Katsudoku. Hey! Um, this is just adorable. So this is from um, Tate Wu, the same person who made Promenade. And this was his release this year. Um, and it's just cute and adorable. Um, I'll probably, I'll play it on camera and you can all watch me not be able to do math. Um, but I'm dying to see more of it. I like, you know what? I think the world needs sometimes just some more small games um, that aren't completely basic either. So I'm very curious to see what's special about it because you can play Sudoku as a group. 
So I'll, I'll find out more soon. You, you will also find out more soon. Yeah, keep watching. Okay, so next, so this is um, a review copy um, that I was lucky to pick up. And this is called Dash Arena. Woo! Um, look how 80s it looks. I <laughs> do love a bit of 80s. So this game reminded me a little bit of air hockey. Basically, you are two teams facing off against each other um, and you're propelled. <laughs> it's jet propulsion. You have a jet pack. So the idea is that you don't move around the board. You kind of have momentum, right? So, and you bounce off things and into other players and you're trying to score goals or squish other players. Um, it seems like a, like a really fun Fun little thing. I like how it looks. The back is upside down. Um, so I'll be unboxing this soon and playing it as well. Um, sometimes you just want a little competitive game, right? Good. Okay, so this one's very exciting because this is the one I saw set up and I was like, I have to have a copy of this. And this is Dao De Cheng um, for Mosa 1851. And it's a game for one to four players. And it's basically a um, resource management game. I'll try and show you the back of it because it was incredible when it was set up. You can kind of see. I don't know a ton about it. I just know I kind of fell in love with the look of it. And that's one thing Essen taught me a lot actually about, is that you can get excited about a game just from how it looks. You know what I mean? That's where your interest often starts. Like as much and all as somebody can tell you, here's all these mechanisms in a game and you know you like them. There's something really visceral about looking at something going, Ooh, I want to touch that. I want to play that. Or even the way something is set up on a board can be very inviting. Um, and I found this one really perplexing. I was like, I really want to try this. Um, so I got very lucky to get a review copy. So I, I'll get to try it. Um, and I will report back with more. I have to say the games that I found the most exciting um, this spiel were actually um, the ones from the East. North, South, East. Yes. <laughs> I had to check. I had to check. Um, um, there was a whole bunch of them I really liked at the, the Taiwanese board design group. Um, kind of just all these cute and colourful things with a twist. And maybe that's just where my brain's going at the moment. But I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just tired of, you know, trading in the Mediterranean. God forbid. But anyway, okay. So we're getting close enough to the bottom of the pile. I might actually make it without passing out. That'd be amazing. Whoops. Um, turns out there was more Aeon's End than I thought. Swear to God, the Void expansion. Cool. Sorry, I just found that in this shack. Actually, speaking of the Taiwanese board game design booth, I also got this. This is Colourful Treasure. Look how tiny it is. Um, and this is from Pokey Design. And this is the second game that came back um, with us straight away so I could play it. As you may know, this Colourful Treasure is in a treasure box. And there's a really big a surprise inside. I got a real surprise when I unboxed it. So I'll keep that as a secret. But this is kind of a, a memory game, but a very smart memory game. It's one where even when you don't make a match, you get something. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, I had a lot of fun with it and it looks amazing. I'm very, very impressed with it. That was, that was a cracker of a game. And I think we're right at the bottom. Well, that's the English rules for this. Yes, so this is the last game. Do, 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 do. This wasn't on my wish list. <laughs> this wasn't on anybody's wish list. So this is from What's Your Game? And this is Railroad Revolution. Okay, so story behind this one. So What's Your Game is the publisher. Um, they also publish games such as Madeira and Nippon. And I really, really want a copy of those. So I sent my husband to go check at their booth to see if they have any other older stuff. You know, maybe there's hope for that. Generally speaking, there weren't older games in essence. And by older games, I mean like two years old games. I couldn't find all sorts of things I would love to have picked up that just didn't exist. But this was here instead. And he sent me a picture of it actually um, set up. You can kind of see the back of it. It looks like, it looks like Ticket to Ride meets I don't know what, something else, a <laughs> stock trading game. Um, we, we just, we liked how it looked. It was very reasonably priced. I thought at like 30 euros or 35 quid. I thought it was very cheap. And we were like, yeah, let's try it. Um, and they're known for making kind of heavier games. So I, I look forward to some heavier gaming. Um, so yeah, I think that is the bottom. Actually, I lie. That is the last of kind of game games. Actually, I have two prototypes which is interesting for me. I'll tell you a little bit about them. I'll be very, very quick. Um, so, and I, I'm actually lying. I found one more game. Of course, it's in with the other prototype. So I managed to meet, where is the prototype gone? Ah, it's probably further away. But I have a copy of um, Kitty Cataclysm. So this is from Stuff by Bess. 
Um, and on the back of it, it says, if you want to know, this game is chaotic. You can be a dick to your, a dick to your friends and family. Um, so it should be kind of fun. It's a little card, it's a little card game to do with cats. And it's like, you, <laughs> there are many cat puns. You need to think about what card to play. That's pretty much the entire game. Did end up with a lot of card games. And I also have a prototype from Bez as well for a game called Plus, um, which is going to be coming out sometime in February, I believe. Um, and as you might know, I've reviewed some of them, at least one of Bez's games before, and they're usually these kind of fast paced um, party games, and I'm truly awful at them. This prototype is no exception. It's called Plus. Um, what you need to do is match or count the colours or shapes you have um, before everyone else does. Oh my god, it broke broke my brain. She showed me how to play and I just sat there and went, ah, my brain's breaking. Uh, but yeah, really, really tough stuff, but really, really fun. Um, so you've got that to look forward to. And the other stand I got to go to um, was Dragon's Dawn Production. Um, so I've reviewed some of their games before, like Black Hat, Peridition's Mouth, Abyssal Rift, and they invited me to come to their stand and say hi, and I got to try out some prototypes. Um, so there's pictures of them. Um, the first one, uh, I'll post up the picture, right, instead of guessing at the game, but it's a space game, but it won't be out till maybe next year. But they do have a political game, which is supposed to be coming out around February. And the minute I heard political, I was like, oh, this is a bit dangerous. Um, and I think it is. It's a it's a very kind of dangerous game. It's, it's, it's a game where everybody plays some kind of influential, famous person in the world. And as a group, you're given a problem to solve, like a real world problem. And you're trying to solve it while also achieving your own goals. I think it's a game people are going to really love or really hate. I think it's a little, it's, but it's very interesting for sure. And so I'll be um, putting together something for that soon as well. It's weird to come back with prototypes. That's a new thing. So yeah, so that's everything. Ta-da, you made it. Congratulations. If you stuck it this far, I don't know, I should I should give you a medal. Um, but you know, so what did you like the look of? What took your eye? Um, and also, did you get any games yourself this month, whether you went to Spiel or otherwise? Um, what have you been playing and what have you been enjoying? Because I got, I got a lot of games to play. My... <laughs> ah, just so much stuff. Um, but you know what? God, it was amazing. Um, I'm so fortunate to be able to have all of this um, and to get to play with all of it. And most importantly, to share it with you. So I'm going to cut this video off now because we probably have been here for forever. Um, but thank you for watching and if you like what I do, why not like or subscribe to the channel because, you know, more bodies, more games, more peoples, all, all kinds of good things. Um, and thank you as always for watching and also thank you to Carl of N20 Games who said something really nice to me before I went to Spiel, that he was really proud of me that I, I went to kind of follow my dreams. Um, and he was right. He was really, really right. It, it was amazing. Um, yeah, it was amazing. So thanks everybody. Take care and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.